Okie dokie. There's a reason why it took me almost four years to watch this movie. I still haven't seen the chair one. So that was a lie. See, I recorded my wedding review video ages ago, and I really didn't have any intentions of watching Suzume, but it seemed to garner a pretty positive reception, even from those that aren't fans of Makoto Shinkai. So I thought I might as well bite the bullet and go check out another one of Shinkai's movies. What did I think about it? Ah, uh, well, Suzume is about a high school girl whose name you'll never guess, who meets a university student called Sorta who is looking for a door in the ruins. Out of curiosity, Suzume searches for the door herself, and in the process, she accidentally pulls out a keystone that is the seal to another world. Now unshackled, a being that is only referred to as Worm will destroy Japan if left unchecked. So Suzume and Sota must journey across the country to find and close the doorways to the world of the Ever After. Oh, so Sota is a chair now. Don't question it. I think most people coming into this will realize that there are two constants with Makoto Shinkai. The movie is absolutely beautiful, and the music is fantastic as well. Because of the nature of the story, our duo are traveling from one side of Japan to another, so in between these supernatural elements, we're greeted with various different locations. We make stops at a rural inn, a karaoke bar, Tokyo Station, and even McDonald's. Everything looks great from the scenery to the food, and we have this wonderful collaboration between Radwimps and the musical composer Kazuma Junochi to bring us another banger of a soundtrack. With that out of the way, let's talk about everything else. See, Suzume in my eyes is probably the weakest out of the three movies I've seen from Makoto Shinkai. Which doesn't mean it's unwatchable, honestly anything that guy releases is like a decent flick you can throw your money at. But Suzume feels the worst when it comes to actual storytelling and there's a number of factors for that. You may have already seen this complaint circulating around the internet, but the pacing is not that great. It wants me to immediately start caring about this saving the world plight, or maybe more accurately, saving some towns and cities, but there's not enough time being taken to give me a reason to feel attached. We're basically balancing multiple things here. Suzume and Sato stopping a city destroying worm, Sato's current predicament as a chair, Suzume and Sato's growing relationship, and Suzume's family drama with her art. On paper, we have a lot to work with here. But none of these parts are given any time to breathe in this bloated movie. There's supposed to be some really emotional character drama being told in this runtime, but for the first half, none of the characters are really that fleshed out. Sato is only there to relay information and explain these supernatural elements, Daijin the cat is just a face for the antagonist, and Suzume's main goal is to go, Eh? What? Nani? Every time something unusual happens, there's definitely improvement in the second half, but for like a solid hour, the dialogue is incredibly stiff and only there to further the story as quickly as possible. While the previous movies are also quite quick in pacing, I don't remember your name or weathering with you being quite as abhorrent as Suzume, and the concepts are honestly more engrossing in the first two. Your name has a body swap romance that inherently creates an interesting dynamic, and weathering with you has us deal with kids trying to make ends meet by controlling the weather, selling sunny days with no rain. Suzume turns one of the main characters into a chair. Sure, they're saving Japan, but I've seen that plot over and over. The selling point is a sentient chair. And yes, while the chair plotline develops into something more interesting, the same thing happens with your name and weathering a few, introducing time travel and human sacrifices, Suzume is just conceptually much weaker. There's also the fact that Suzume is basically being guided by the hand throughout most of the movie. Traveling across Japan is not easy, especially for a teenage girl, but time and time again she manages to meet some locals that either helps her get to her destination or gives her a place to stay during the night. Maybe Japanese people are just much nicer to strangers than I am, but there's this very glaring scene where Suzume's art finally catches up to her because she's basically been on the run for several days, and Suzume just convinces her, along with another local, to come along on a journey with very little resistance and zero explanation for why she wants to go on another multiple hour trip. The way these scenes develop mostly makes sense on paper, hitchhiking does exist, but it all happens in such quick succession and with near perfect timing that nothing in this movie ever feels like it's organically flowing from one event to another. 
I want to come back to the family drama because this is so poorly done. It tries to do this emotional reveal about their true feelings towards each other, but it does two things wrong. First, the drama is forced out due to supernatural circumstances that allow the movie to take accountability away from the characters. Second, the pacing again comes in decides to solve the drama in basically 10 minutes or so. So you're sitting here wondering, what even was the point of having it in the story? I'm starting to wonder if Shinkai is actually being restricted within the confines of a movie. If he was to tell the story in a TV format, he would probably have to sacrifice production quality, but it would give him more runtime to work with and really flesh out his narratives. I also saw online that apparently Shinkai didn't want another romance, Sato was supposed to be a woman, and we were supposed to get some sort of sisterhood relationship that was unfortunately rejected by the producers. Which, props to him for realizing his formula is getting a bit stale and wanting to branch out. It makes me wonder if the issues we keep seeing in these movies are actually caused by changes made by other people, or maybe he's just having to make a bunch of cuts to fit within constraints. Which, some might say that's a necessary skill for creators being able to understand the limits of your medium. While I do agree with that to an extent, I also wonder if Shinkai is in any way stifled by his circumstances. I unfortunately have no way of knowing the truth. My knowledge of movie production is limited and I can only really make speculations. Maybe Makoto Shinkai just isn't that good with working the kinks out of his stories. Either way, Suzume is still okay-ish, but I have to rank it at the bottom compared to his previous two movies. Thanks for watching, if you'd like me to turn into a chair, let me know in the comments below and tell me your thoughts while you're down there. Like and subscribe for more content, let me know if there's something you'd like me to cover, I like to talk about anything that interests me. That's all I want to say, I hope you all have a good day.